Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. This year we are celebrating the 10th anniversary of your favorite TV show. Once again, we have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We support them to become more productive, get better yields, and increase their income. We meet families and enter their kitchens to explore what we eat, where we get it, and how we can cook it in cleaner, faster, healthier, and cheaper ways. And at the same time, increase family nutrition. We will see how farmers from across the region can benefit from our experts' advice. While also learn from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences as they shape up their shambas. Welcome to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Bissell Town is known for its large cattle market that brings cattle all the way from Tanzania and supply a lot of the meat to markets around Nairobi. But sometimes the continuous droughts have forced the Maasai cattle herds to the brink of starvation. For these legendary warriors, the next battle means combating climate change through education and adaptation. Welcome to Shamba Shepa. Today we are in Bissell in Kajiado. We now proceed to the village of Enzilangi to meet Paris and Daniel Kisipan. Let's go! In the village of Enzilang, we meet a family that has adapted climate change by venturing into farming. Meet Paris Naisenya and her husband Daniel Ole Kisipin. They have four grown-up children who live in different parts of Kenya. But their firstborn son is back home with his wife and two children. Paris and Daniel have lived on this chamber in Bissell for over 30 years. Working hard together, they grow a variety of crops, but their main income comes from their cattle business. And that's the good news. But the bad news is that they are suffering all sorts of problems and are desperately in need of some expert advice. These tomatoes is the first time I'm planting them. I was just trying and they are doing very well, but the market is flooded. Can't consume all of them. Yes. And I don't know what to do with them. The birds are eating them. I don't know what to do. Caro, from what I can see here, there's a lot of wastage. This is serious, Tony. Considering there's a large number of people going hungry, mm -hmm. we don't need to waste food. So you don't have to worry. Caro and I know the expert to see who is going to help you out with this situation. Yes. And we'll be right back with a solution which I think is going to make you very happy. Caro, yes. let's go. Let's go. We need to find a solution fast before we can even start working. Farmers spend months working in the fields and now have bountiful harvests of fruits and vegetables. How can they best maintain the quality and safety of their product as it travels from the field to the table? We are meeting Daniel Ndungu from the World Food Program to tell us more about post-harvest loss of fruits and vegetables across Africa. There is a significant loss that happens, especially once farmers harvest. And post-harvest loss for fresh foods, these are vegetables and, and fruits, they occur right after uh, harvesting and across the value chain, including during transportation and at the retail stage of the market. So, so how, how big is this problem of post-harvest in fresh produce? Uh, in many countries, it's estimated that the losses could occur on average about 20%, but in many cases, the losses for fruits and vegetables is up to 50%, which is a significant loss both to, to farmers' income, but also uh, to, it's, it's also a threat to food and nutrition security. So how, how can you help our farmers? There are practices, but they are also emerging low-cost technologies that farmers can use mostly to preserve uh, their produce after it's harvested, uh, both at the farm and when they go to sell at the market, and those technologies are also available for small-scale retailers at the market. World Food Program is working in partnership with both public and private stakeholders to ensure zero food loss. Today we are starting off with Dr. Jane from the University of Nairobi. Let's see what she has to say. What we have here is a, a low-cost cold storage technology called a Zero Energy Brick Cooler. 
is one of the technologies that we're trying to promote for farmers to adopt for cold storage. Uh -huh. We know cold storage is very important in preservation of quality of perishable commodities like fruits and vegetables. So yes. why is it important for farmers to store their fresh produce? Imagine I'm a smallholder farmer. I've harvested my kelps. Maybe I'm waiting for the broker to come and pick my skumawiki. And for some reason, the broker, maybe transport problem or something like that, or the truck broke down. What do you do with your cows? If you leave them out, they'll wilt and they'll not be good for, for the market. So that means it will be wasted. Two, I'm a trader or I'm a farmer who is also a trader. So I take my cows to the, to the market and I try to sell and I don't sell everything. What do I do with the, whatever is left? If I'm a smallholder trader, it's, it's more costly for me to transport my produce back to the farm yes. than to leave it in the, in the market. And that's why you find a lot of waste at the market because the farmer is imagining if I take this produce, Tomorrow, if I bring it back, I can't sell because it will be wilted and not good for, for the market. Mm -hmm. So it serves the purpose of you can store your produce after harvest. If you are a trader, you can, uh, you know, come from the market. Whatever you didn't sell, you can still bring here. And tomorrow, again, I take it to the market. That's wow. why cold storage is critical to preserve quality of mm -hmm. perishable produce, especially for fruits and vegetables where we lose a lot after harvest. Mm -hmm. Yes. W why is it zero energy? We call it evaporative cooling. Meaning, we are not using electricity or any form of external energy to power it. This is what you will need to build a zero energy brick cooler. An overhead water tank, bricks, pipes, and make holes on them. Some riverbed sand to put in between the bricks and a cover made of absorbent material such as sizovags. So, this is how it works. Water moves down by gravity from the overhead tank. It flows into the pipes which have holes and then the dripping water keeps the sand wet. The bricks are interlocked without cement so air can pass through. So when hot air comes from outside, it meets with the wet sand which is carrying water. The water takes up the heat in the air and it evaporates. So the air that goes inside the chamber is cool and also humid. So two benefits of evaporative cooling, there's cool air and there's high humidity, and those two are the ones that will preserve the quality of your vegetables. So Jane, what's the capacity of the zero energy brick cooler? You have pallets that produce is put on. So we can put eight crates of oh. produce one layer. But if it's produce that can be stuck together so that you put two layers of crates, then you have like 16 crates. It is not limited to only leafy veggies. You can also store fruits here. Now, the only thing that uh, farmers have to be aware of is uh, you don't get to mix fruits with the vegetables. Fruits produce a ripening hormone called ethylene. So, if you mix fruits and vegetables in this brick cooler, this ripening hormone will make your vegetables to turn yellow or brown. If you have both tomatoes and uh, kales in the, in the farm, then you are advised to have two of these uh, chambers. For Sukuma week, the marketing period is one day. If you don't have storage, it will go to waste. So from our studies that we've done before, Sukuma week can stay here for like five days more. Five days? Yes. Wow. Farmers who are in large groups and plan to do commercial farming, they opt to use cool boat technology as low cost alternative to cold rooms. Meanwhile, Caro has discovered another way for farmers to reduce food losses by drying and preserving fruits and vegetables. George, yes. this looks amazing. Yeah, this is a tunnel solar dryer. Tunnel solar dryer. We trap the sun rays mm -hmm. and use it to dry uh, food materials such as fruits and vegetables. The tunnel solar dryer enables farmers to dry and preserve their harvest for consumption or sale at a later date. It doesn't need electricity, and it is a long-term solution, but given the cost, farmers may need to form a group to buy one. So what happens to our small-scale farmers or our kawaida farmers in the village? Yeah, I can show you an alternative All right. for the small-scale farmer. Ah. Yeah, so is here, yes, so here we have what we are calling a dehydrate. Dehydration. 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 Yes. And it dries vegetables and fruits if you want them to last much longer. The dehydrate works using sun rays and can hold 2.5 kilograms of vegetables. And that is another way of reducing loss and increasing food security. Most farmers uh, harvest during the time of plenty. They mm -hmm. have a lot of food, yes. especially fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, this is one way to reduce the losses okay. so that you ensure that over the time, a longer period of time, you still have food in the house. Mm -hmm. And so it assures food security mm -hmm. in short. So after it's dried, right. what next? There are many alternatives on how to package. Can I show you how of to course, do that? Of course, of course. Please come. Yes. This is the end product. Yes, this is the I end product. I can't believe this. <gasps> Completely dry. Yeah, it is dry. Wow. How long can it last? Uh, this can last up to a year. One whole year? One whole year. That means we have a way of saving our food from post-production loss. And ensuring the food is available throughout the year. Throughout the year. Yes. Mm. What a day, Tony! And the valuable information we have got to take back to our farmer. But first, thanks to your reports, we managed to get rid of the desert locust in most of Kenya. However, in the last couple of weeks, we have seen the return of locust in some areas. These are the areas that are currently affected by the desert locust in Kenya. Most locusts have been reported in Samburu. Some locusts have also been reported in Turkana. And a few locusts have been reported in Marsabit, Laikipia, and West Pokot. We are seeing many new swarms of locusts forming. They are expected to move across the borders to Ethiopia, South Sudan, Sudan, and Uganda. The desert locusts are like a fire. You as an individual farmer cannot control them. As we saw, local authorities have teams that can spray the locusts with special chemicals that will control them. It is important you continue to report and tell us whether you have seen locusts in your area. Tell us if you have seen the black and yellow hoppers, the pink immature locusts, or the yellow mature locusts. Here is what to do. Send the word locust to the number 0748-153-120. For you smartphone users, you can also text locust to 0207-640-202. And we will get in touch with you. New day on the Shamba. Lots of work to get done. But first things first, handing over the dehydrate to Paris. The dehydrate will enable her to preserve her tomato harvest and reduce her food losses. Using this tray is so easy. And Paris is not wasting any time in getting the dehydrate to work. <laughs> Tony. No, 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 no. You can't be serious. You're busy sitting down on your phone, yet you have a lot of work to do on the shamba. Really? All right, all right. Come on, let's get to work. We have long droughts, not enough rain most of the time. Like the last time we had rains, it, it, we didn't expect that rain. The last November, December, January, those long rains, we didn't expect them, but they came and it was very heavy. And I think that is also climate change, I don't know. The rainy season has become short and unpredictable. Grass doesn't have time to grow before the next drought comes. Which means the cattle have nothing to eat. Some Maasai herdsmen end up walking for weeks to find pasture for their cattle. Others slaughter their herds or sell off the ancestral land in order to feed the families. Wow, that shed looks like it really needs a shape up. And our very own Caris can't wait to get started on building a proper store. A good store should be airy, raised and well covered from the sun and rain. And to make sure they get the very best advice, we invited Michael Maundu, an animal production specialist from Coopers, to join us. So why, why are you keeping the cows? Milk, of course, and we also keep them for whenever you have a problem, a problem comes by, mm -hmm. you either sell mm -hmm. to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. When you have a dowry, maybe you, you are one of your your sons is getting married yes. at least you have cows to give out uh -huh. in Maasai to have cows is very important it's also a sign of wealth that's right so uh, you've talked about selling when it's uh, time for need how much do you sell these cows for other homes in Maasai land yes. it's the man who take cows to the ah, to, to the, the market. market but for us we've decided she better does that because she's more careful 
oh, like it means so I'm, if you're I'm given rich. money, you... Uh, I'll have many friends <laughs> and uh, I'll buy a lot of meat to many people. Yes, so yeah. you've given the responsibility, the financial responsibility to your wife. That is very nice. So that means women are coming up, which is yes, good, which is good. So Paris, so let's give an example, maybe this white one. The white one maybe will go to about 50,000 to 40,000. 40, 40 to 50,000. 50, yes. Wow. When they are selling, when the need comes, mm -hmm. you may not keep a good track of, uh, do I get money in this project or not? I would advise uh, we shift from keeping the cows and then selling them when there is need mm -hmm. to business goal. At one time, we select like 10 cows, mm -hmm. then put them under program, finishing program, mm -hmm. fattening program. Mm -hmm. So that after two months, they gain weight, then you sell them at once, you get good money. Mm -hmm. Then you, you be able to eject some of the money back to the, to the project, you replace with the young ones, then the balance will be your benefit. Mm -hmm. I would recommend that. Then the program keep, keeps going. At any time, you have like 10 cows or 10 animals to sell. Mm -hmm. So that now they see the benefits of what they are doing. I think it's a very good idea what he said. Uh, the thing is, there's a saying in Maasai that uh, for you to decide which cow you're going to sell, you make many discussions, as many as you are here. They take cows to be our very good friends. Otherwise, we, we agree with what he said, but we are just hoping that the ready market will be available, a place that you, you see a good profit. With that kind of program, we need to identify which is the market. When we put those animals in, the, in such program, the quality of the meat goes up. So definitely you also get what? A good market for the meat. Yes. For you to say that we feed them specially, what do we use to feed them? In the normal grass we are giving them or what ex extra do we need Correct. to give them? The market nowadays is going to buying package, mm -hmm. so we need that extra weight. We can choose to use what we call total mixed ration, whereby the animal we've selected, they don't go out for grazing, mm -hmm. because once they go to, to grazing, they use some, some energy to, for grazing. Mm -hmm. So we keep them in a special place. They zero graze. They, they zero graze. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we feed them. Or we can also decide that now that we have a lot of grass uh, in, in the fields, they graze in the evening, you give them some concentrates. Within two months, they gain some weight and then you, you disperse. Yes. So, our farmers will need to feed their 10 selected cows using a basal diet. This means, one, there should be enough clean drinking water at all times. Two, good quality hay or grass, which should give energy protein and minerals. But because most pastures lack enough proteins and minerals, they will need to supplement to achieve the desired weight. Add Diamond V to your feed. Diamond V helps the cow to digest the feed well and absorbs all the nutrients for faster growth. Give one tablespoon per cow per day. Then add Kupakula nutrition to boost the protein level, which will build the muscles of the cow and thereby adding extra weight. Mix Kupakula with concentrates such as maize jam or wheat bran, 5 kg bag to a 70 kg bag of concentrates. Mix well and give the cows. After the cows are fed well, they will need to give them a mineral like maklik beef. This will increase the performance of the cows, give them a better body score and faster growth. They can give maklik beef to the cows at free will, but if it's too costly for them, then they can do 200 grams per cow per day. Paris and Daniel have a large piece of land, so Michael also advised that they should harvest the grass and store, especially for the drought period, so the program runs smoothly. When you're harvesting, you harvest at the right time, and at the right time it's when the grass is at uh, flower stage. The nutrients are at peak. There's a lot of vitamins, carbohydrates, and a lot of protein in that stage. The belled grass should be dried under a shade so that the sun doesn't take up the nutrients. Meanwhile, I wonder how the store is coming along and if Tony is really helping Caris in building. I'm very hungry.
Nemo, thank you very much for joining us. I had to call you because now we've been here at Paris's Shamba, uh -huh. working very hard. It's lunchtime, I'm feeling hungry. I came to the kitchen and I found you are making matumbo. Mm -hmm. But it was not ready. Yes, and I'm right. still hungry. So I remembered that Nemo can uh, give us a solution to cooking faster and safely and cheaper. Yes. And uh, here you are. Now let me start with you, Paris. How long does it take you to cook matumbo? Two hours. <gasps> Boiling and frying. That's a lot of time that you can spend doing so much, isn't yes. it, Nemo? Yes, two hours is a very long time. I have come with a pressure cooker to help you reduce that time so that you can feed your family on time. So this is the pressure cooker. So it has this lid. Um, this lid, it prevents the steam from escaping. It has a stainless steel inside and a plastic coating to prevent you from getting burnt when you're handling the pressure cooker. Inside we have two plastic spoons to prevent um, the scratching of the sufuria. Yes, and you can also substitute this with a wooden muiko. Then you have the measuring cups. These ones you use to measure water. Mm -hmm. This mesh, you use it when steaming. Let's say you want to cook arrowroot, it will cook through steam. How much electricity token do I use in the pressure cooker? Um, the electric pressure cooker uses steam to cook. So once you connect it to the electricity, it generates um, heat. And once the steam builds up, the electricity stops being consumed and your food is cooked using the steam. Um, today I've brought with me a um, power meter. The power meter will tell us how much money we will consume, how many tokens we will use. You said when you're cooking matumbo, you are spending almost two hours. Yes. What normally do you use when you're cooking food like matumbo? Charcoal. Charcoal. Yes. And how much is one tin? One tin is 150. Paris uses two tins of charcoal that cost her 300 shillings. And now she's going to spend how much time cooking matumbo? It takes roughly between 30 minutes and 40 minutes. Yes, depending on how tender you want to your matumbo to be. The matumbo will be ready with 30 minutes. Yes. And at oh, what right. cost? So the cost, it will depend with the amount of time that you use. And it will average between 8 shillings and 12 shillings. <laughs> you can see how much money you'll be saving. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. The pressure cooker is on. So we'll start cooking at zero, at zero shillings, mm -hmm. yeah? How do you put it on? To switch on the pressure cooker, you just connect it to the socket. Mm -hmm. That's it. And then to switch it off, you disconnect it, yes. To start cooking, mm -hmm. you have to come to menu, mm -hmm. then select saute. Mm -hmm. Saute means to, to karanga. Mm -hmm. We click one, two, three, five, four, five, saute. You wait 10 seconds and then it will lock itself to this setting. Once it locks, mm -hmm. it gives you 30 minutes to saute. So now I'll start with the onions. So let's put in the onions, add some oil, then garlic and ginger. Let's put in our tomatoes. Some seasoning, add some salt. And finally, the matumbo. Add some water, stir, and then cover. Cancel the saute program and set the pressure cooker to cook the matumbo, and that's it. You can even go and do other chores as you wait for it to cook. So, is our food ready? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. How long did it take? It took 40 minutes to cook the matumbo to tenderness and it cost us 6 shillings and 94 cents. Wow. Paris uses 300 shillings on charcoal and takes two hours to make matumbo using a charcoal burner. But with a pressure cooker, she's used 6 shillings and 94 cents and took 40 minutes to cook the same matumbo. What do you think of that, Paris? I think it's perfect. It's very efficient. So now, serve us. Let's have a taste and see. Mmm. Yes. Ah. There is our matumbo. 
nice aroma. Very tender and very sweet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is what I was looking forward to. Mm -hmm. And I think mission accomplished. Yes. Thank you very much. Let's see what the other family members have to say. Daniel was impressed by how efficient and cost effective the electric pressure cooker was. It also means he'll be getting his dinner in good time. Yeah, that's what we need. Good. Thank you. Good. Ah, so here we have the store. Michael? Yes. What have Carol. you been up to? Well, I was inspecting the, our store. Yes. And I've seen that uh, it is well done. Uh -huh. It has been a, a little bit raised because mm -hmm. we need to prevent the moisture and also the termites. Mm -hmm. We used uh, termite control. The shade is uh, well done to yeah. prevent the hay from direct sunlight. Okay. So this is uh, the ideal store. Now we know how it is done. Mm -hmm. We didn't know before and it's, yes. it's going to be of a of help. very big help. Yes, I think we are very grateful yes. with the store. Mm -hmm. uh, we thank you very much for the help. Yes. At least they will have enough grass mm -hmm. yes. for the days that we normally have the long drought. Mm -hmm. so and when they have good food and, and they get good body, yeah. Yeah, they fetch a lot of a lot right. in the market. That's good. Right. <laughs> Welcome to Q&D. Joining us today is Anthony Nyongesa from Parfit. Now Njiru from Embu is asking, once our farmers have planted and harvested, what advice can you give them on how to access markets? Our program, what we've been doing, we've been uh, uh, helping farmers form civil organizations organization that uh, aggregate their produce together, also reducing uh, cost of transaction. When they aggregate together, they're able to face the market as a team, and uh, increase their bargaining power. You can cut down on cost of, tra of transport when you sell in Baliki, and also can be able to get good market uh, where uh, you, your produce are required, are needed. Anthony, we have received a lot of questions from our farmers telling us that the climate is changing. Now planting season is uncertain, rains come, sometimes they don't come, or maybe they are too heavy, or too light, or too late. Climate change, for a common woman to understand, there's variability in terms of rainfall uh, amount, distribution, and intensity. The way uh, we are receiving rains nowadays, it is erratic and doesn't last long. Because of the way we prepare our land, when there is erratic rainfall, water cannot be able to percolate easily into the soil, resulting into runoff. So percolation is inability of uh, rainwater sinking into the soil. So at the end, the crops will not have sufficient moisture for development or growth. When farmers start by reduced tillage, they don't turn their soils overall time of their soil will enable water to percolate into the soil and then there will be no uh, runoff, water will be stored for the crops. Thank you for all your comments and your questions. Keep them coming, we'll do our best to answer them together with our experts right here on Q&A. This chamber shape up has taught me a lot of things and I'm very happy. They've taught me how to keep my cows as business and to cook with a pressure cooker and drying my tomatoes with the sun. We expect our way of living to improve. I'm very sure the village will learn a lot more from us. Uh, we've learned a lot from you. Bye. 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 See you. Bye. Next time. And with all our tasks completed on Paris and Daniel Kisipan's shamba, it's time for us to say goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.